Why did I make this video? If we're going to use this little API with a highlighted portion you see above, you're gonna see some raw JSON such as this. We're interested in looking at Bitcoin here for a search criteria, pulling pages of articles which have references to Bitcoin. At the end of this video, we're throwing everything into a data frame so you can do your manipulations. <laughs> Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Today we're going to look at the unofficial version of the CNN News API. User on Twitter hit me up about one or two weeks ago wanting a little assistance. Unfortunately at the time our scheduling didn't work, but it gave me an idea for this video. So thank you to the user who reached out to me. Too bad I wasn't able to get back to you in time to help you. Here's my socials. Feel free to hit me up. All the code will be in the link in the description below from my GitHub. Feel free if you would like to do a super thanks or channel membership. Sorry for the shameless plug, but got to do it. What's really going on here? If we're going to use this little API with a highlighted portion you see above showing the web page, you're going to see some raw JSON such as this. We're interested in looking at Bitcoin here for a search criteria. And what we're basically essentially doing is pulling pages of articles which have references to Bitcoin. I'm assuming the person who was interested in doing this was wanting to do either natural language processing or getting an idea for maybe what's going on in the market it over time. That's what I could assume. I didn't ask him, but that's what I would do. You have some options here. You see up top, I have from equals zero and I'm sorting it to the newest articles. You also have an option called page. We're going to go over how the distinction is between using page and from and both together and how it actually retrieves our data. Here, are the imports that we're going to use. And at the end of this video, we're throwing everything into a data frame so you can do your manipulations any way that you want. Usually when you're in a circumstance such as this, you're going to have an API key. Fortunately, in this case, I didn't have to do any registration, set up an API key and all that stupid junk. But in a lot of instances, you would have something like this. For somebody who's never used an API, I'm just giving you some heads up or someone who's web scraping, which pertains to the headers as well. If you're using specific browsers or any kind of information like that, that's particular for your system, for example, you'd have something like this that you throw into a header when you're trying to pull the data. What we're starting with, just like when you're using web scraping, for example, you're going to have that baseline, that URL that you're starting with before you do anything. That's what I'm starting with here. Hey kid, don't ever let them get inside your head. I decided to put this together and show you with from and page variables together to see what happens when we pull our data. Now this is going to be interesting. We have 21 columns for these data and each page or from selection we use will have 50 entries. This is very important, okay? So here's an idea of what you're pulling. Basically what his interest would be and probably most people using this, you need a way to reference with a date. You'd be interested in the text body and you for sure need Need to take this identification marker, which is important, and I'm going to show you next. Let's see what happens when we start pulling these data. Let's pull this real quick and see what it looks like raw so you can get an idea of what it's pulling. We saw the web browser, but let's just look at this. You have the result which we are pulling here to put into our data frame. The values for are a list of dictionaries. When we pull it, we could look at each individual entry to see what's going on, which helps us so I don't have to keep making this call explain what each entry has. So this is our dictionary with our key value pairs and all of the keys and you'll have these identification marks here which pertain to possibly like other citations or notes where these could have came from. Let's pay attention here. With this first entry we started from zero but we did page one. You have your last modified date which is we're starting from newest and going to oldest so it starts from July 6th of this year and our 50th entry is from May 9th. Let's see something. What happens if I do zero? We go to May 9th and it's the same thing. So something looks like it's going on with the pages. So we need to take note of this. Today's purpose of the video is to take note of things when you're messing with data or investigating something to start getting clues, playing with the code to figure out what's going on because you're doing inspection. When you're dealing with something new you haven't done, you have to play around with it. That's the point of this to help you start thinking about your process a little 
little bit different. When we were starting with this, at the starting point or position of zero, zero, here's the date time markers that we have for this page. If we were just dealing with the pages, like I just showed above, we still have the same entries of July 6th and the 9th of May. Let's use this helper function real quick to help us go through this and piece this together. This little helper function allows me to go through my first little piece of the URL, which is most important. And I'm adding on while I request, do a get request for this web page, this URL, whatever I would like to place in here, a page or a from, and then the number I would like to use. And then I threw in the headers. And notice that I'm using a .json. So I'm pulling all this stuff as a JSON file. I'm throwing this in a DF, which we're going to use later. And I decided I want to print out the first and last entry for each of the 50 so we can have an idea of date times when we're manipulating to figure out what's consistent and what is not doing anything to get an idea of how we're going to pull sequentially over time each of these files, each of these pages. Because if, if for example, you're using the pages and it's not doing anything, why are we going to iterate over that? You understand what I'm saying? For instance, I decided I wanted to use this first part going from the first three pages and then see the difference using page for the first three pages. The first page of from starting at zero goes from July 6th to the 5th of May. The second page on the other hand goes from the 4th of July to the 9th of May and the 30th of June to the 5th of May. Whereas each one of the pages that was iterated by itself showed the same information without changes. That's very important because later on you would have to ask yourself, well, what's really going on here? And you'd have to step back and look at the code to see that it was basically useless. Now we can see that when we're iterating through each of the from here, we're going to get a result. I decided to look at last modified because if you look at first publish, that's going to throw off your dates. So I looked at the last modified because you'll have the same article, which will be referenced by this ID, which is very important here because it's unique. And I had to go through this to verify that that was the case, because if it was not the case that this ID was unique, I would have to use the text body, hoping the body of this text did not change significantly when I do a comparison of duplicates. That's another thing that you need to be very particular for. When you're pulling this kind of data, you may pull a lot of data, but you may have duplicates that you were unaware of, and you can't single-handedly just look at them. You have to create functions or use manipulations to, to find them and pull them out. So I hope that made sense. The next thing that I want to mention is this. I threw this table together so we could kind of illustrate what really happened from a as I went from page 0, 1, and 2 using pages, we noticed the dates did not change. Using from, on the other hand, here, we noticed we got these time frames, which are different. But pay attention. Going from the very newest page of 0, we start on the 6th of July. Going to the second one, we only have two days difference. So you have to be careful because now you're going to have from each of these pages, from or page, you have 50 entries. You're only going to have a few extra entries entries going from 0 to 1. And then going from the 30th of June to the 5th of May, you're only going to have a few more entries. So if you did all three of these from 0 to 2, you're going to have an output of 150. Out of that 150, you're going to have a massive amount of duplicates and you need to do a comparison to find that. We need to think about now, how are we going to pull these data? What type of loop are we doing? Do you want to pull all of the historical data from the beginning of time for this website relative to whatever your query in this case, Bitcoin. Do you have a specific time frame you're looking for? Do you know how many pages you're only wanting to pull? If that's the case, consider a regular loop or a list comprehension. On the other hand, if you have no idea of the length of data you're pulling, use a while loop. I created this little simple function to illustrate what we're trying to do. If I have a starting and an endpoint here, I would like to iterate through that. When you're going through APIs, another important thing is thinking about one, are you going to have too many function calls that may be an issue too. Too much time elapsed between each call to basically boot you out. Think of it like that. We take our entry point, which is our base URL that we're dealing with, with my query of Bitcoin and I'm using from and I'm iterating through however many pages from the newest one. I'm doing my get request and I'm pulling that JSON file with all the values which are stored in the list of dictionaries. I left two parameters for us to pull from our function. One, if you're interested in looking at the 
raw data to the list which I didn't extend on so I could basically have everything sequentially added instead of a list of lists which was unnecessary in this case. I chuck it in to my data frame calling the first four pages zero to three this first parameter C and I wanted the tail to illustrate that because we went through zero to three we have 150 entries. From already looking at this I know I have a problem because I know I have duplicates that I have to figure out what key or column name I would like to use to remove them. Since I was able to verify I can use the ID marker to pull these data I dropped well I found the duplicates based on this and I sorted it to verify that this is actually the case okay so if you look at these we see that it's a match and we see that this looks like it's pretty good I didn't read the whole article and we could see that we have the last modified here which is okay because we're not basing it off of this this could have changed if they updated this article and last modified with multiple days that could have changed so that wouldn't have been useful if we were using it as a marker to find duplicates since I found these duplicates I want to remove these duplicates that's why I'm using this drop duplicates here but we're gonna see something notice that I got 52 rows now out of hundred and fifty these are 52 unique rows let's think about something since we already dropped all of the duplicates let's think about how we should actually loop through this we have the regular for loop we have an option which would be faster to use the list comprehension there's times when it doesn't necessarily come out to be much faster but you could benchmark that on your own we have the other option instead of pulling all of these useless columns where we probably only want a couple how about this pull them while we're actually parsing this and using the API to pull our data so what I decided is since you're pulling the whole file on this get request get our key value pairs by pulling the key of result which produces the list of dictionaries and inside of that iterate over each entry and pull the text body as an example of a column I'm interested in and that's what I pulled here. The ID is something you would want to grab. So you could do the drop duplicates and then what columns you would like. You pull it all at once to store them in a list or directly to a data frame. And that would help you so you wouldn't have to do all of the manipulations in Pandas later. That's one option. The next thing I did to kind of cheat, since there's so many pages I already knew and I had an idea, I said, let me find a starting point and an ending point so I can have an idea to cheat kind of for illustration. When you're doing a while loop, you have no idea what the ending point is. I wanted to get close to the ending point so we're not sitting here for an hour and a half iterating through 1400 plus pages. So that's what I did here and found is still true. 1418 did not have any entries. So I made up using a while loop we say this. I have a starting point. If we wanted all the newest to the oldest we would have used zero. But I did this for just illustrative purposes so we're not sitting here for an extended amount of crazy time. There's different ways you can do while loops. In this circumstance we're using a while while true. So I wanted to iterate through each one of my pages, but I'm really going through the from section instead of page. And I'm starting at this position and I'm incrementing one by one to pull our data. But what will happen is I need a condition so I know where I'm going to stop for it to do some kind of operation, etc. I wanted to say if my key value pairs that I'm pulling from this get request are an empty list, print the page number. If it's not an empty list, print the page number. Otherwise, print I'm done and get out of the loop. And what happened was this. I went through these pages and at 1416 I found the end of this. So that allowed me to say two things. One, I know that there is actually an end. And two, if you are going to pull all of this data, you have an idea now of where you're at if you wanted to pull all of this historic data, of course. And if that was the case, you need to produce some code which would help you, one, not get kicked out of the API for making too many calls. And two, if there's a lag in the time between the calls so it doesn't kick you out. Out, and that's where the sleep function comes in. If we were to move forward, where would we go from this? You need to think about speed up adjustments after you finish your code. You got to make sure you're not timing out and you got to make sure you're not making too many calls because sometimes some places that's an issue. Also consider parsing your data if you don't need to store everything. This is going to help you on memory management. It's going to help you on a lot of things, especially time. You may have to make a few other calls because you're doing comparison checks of if this is there, if it's not there or things like this that you may have to reproduce in your code later to think of and consider. But that's the conclusion of this video. And I'd like to say, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Remember, hit me up here on my socials. All the code, like I said before, is in my GitHub. And as parting remarks, data science, data science, data science, data science, data science for the algorithm. I'll see you in the next one. And thank you for watching. Bye.